Hello everyone and welcome to my commentary track. Now, so I've I've often thought about doing like commentary tracks for my videos as I have a lot of thoughts on them and you know not everything makes the final cut. So I thought, you know, we might try something new here and um I just might go through the video and sort of scan through it, you know, you know, give give little things about the the video. So let's let's have a look at this and see what happens. Weep. <laughs> so, right, that intro, um, funny thing about that intro is, uh, <laughs> um, I, I had thought of that intro before even doing the video, so like long before when I, you know, thought about making the video, I always kind of knew that I wanted that to be the intro for the video because it's something with the Family Tree videos is that I like to kind of have the first thing be like really interesting, so in the Flying Scots, or in the Gordon Family Tree video, it was like this cool shot of Scotsman, and then the Rebecca family tree was a really cool shot of Rebecca. So for the Scarloe tree one, I knew that I was going to use a really cool shot of like Scarloe. And I thought, what better than a shot of him like coming down the incline? Weep. That, that's exactly how I imagined it in my head, the video starting. And also the music below this is the streamlining which in the context of this video it doesn't make any sense like why streamlining playing below this but like this is sort of the intro i used for the gordon family tree and then i just sort of carried it over to the rebecca one and now it's just sort of become the motif of the family tree videos to use the streamlining song even though it, it doesn't really mean anything you know yeah everyone so last time i covered rebecca's family tree and before that i covered gordon's it's also good to recap for like people who haven't you know Maybe this is the first time they're watching it. It's good to kind of recap the video, you know. So that's kind of what I was going for here. And in those videos, I... Also, in the opening of the Rebecca video, I um, I opened with this shot of Gordon and Rebecca. So I thought I might pay that off as well. I used a Scarloe railway family tree. <laughs> I just love... It. Another, another one of the first things I knew when I was making this video was... I knew for a fact that I was going to have Smudger in the thumbnail. I didn't care where, I didn't care how. I just wanted him somewhere. Because I knew... No matter railway series, TV series, if you saw Scarloe Railway Family Tree with Smudger in the thumbnail, I knew you'd click it. <laughs> um, I, I did I did try out a different version of the thumbnail where like it was much bigger, like Smudger was really big. It didn't work as well, so you'll notice that Smudger is slightly bigger than the other engines here. Um, but I, I knew that from the beginning. And also, oh, it's such a shame. I, I, I like really wanted to put, um, what was his name, Henry A. Fletcher here. But we didn't have a photo of him, so I tried using like like no profile pictures. I tried a question mark, um, but nothing really worked. So I just kind of had to go for this, which you know, whatever. Video, and so today we are finally going to do that. I thought Gordon's family tree was complicated. Also, this this footage of Gordon and S Scotsman, um, it actually comes from the music video that I downloaded by um, oh, what's his name, Roll Along. Um, and I credit him in the description, obviously. So. But it ain't got nothing on the Scarloe Railway family tree. This was by far the hardest family tree video to research. Not only will I be touching upon the Scarloe and Reneus family tree, but I will also be touching upon Sir Handel's, Peter Sam's, Rusty's. I think it's good to... Also, you're probably wondering how I do all this. Like, you're probably wondering how I make the family tree. What I do is, and this is true for all of my videos, I use MS Paint. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll make a file uh, in MS Paint, and um, you know, I'll I'll edit together all of these like images. You'll if you look closely, you'll probably see some imperfections. Um, but like, what I'll do is in the editing software, it's actually just reve revealing the image, and the background. There's actually two images here. There's the there's the image that I made in MS Paint um, of all the engines, and the, there's the background which is just a blank color. So it's just, it's like the size of the video, and it's just um, it's the size. It's like a yeah, it's just the background basically that's blank. And so it, it gives the illusion that like the tree is there when there's actually two images. It, I hope anyone, did anyone understand that? Reneus family tree, but I will also be touching a- Yeah, so you'll see here, you see the way the image is being revealed here. So there's just, there's actually just two images here. There's the background and there's the, the top image here. And I've just revealed it. So like it saves me having to bring in like uh, images of both, you know, Sir Handel and Sir Hayden, and like putting all these lines, it just saves a bunch of time basically, so yeah. Upon Sir Handel's, Peter Sam's, Rusty's, Duncan. Hope that doesn't break the illusion too much. You'll notice here like, you'll notice the way the lines, they cut off like here. 
that's because the, that's where the image is cutting off. So yeah. And many, many others. This family tree was hard because not only did I have to consider real life locomotives, but I also had to consider the railway series engines too. The TV series exclusive car. Yeah, you see, with these intros, what I like to do is I like to really shake them up. Now, so what I do for the intros is um, I actually edit the intros last. So I'll usually I'll usually download all the footage and I'll edit together the beginning of the video. Like I'll, obviously I'll what I'll do first actually is I'll edit the audio, then I'll put in the you know what would you call it the the background, and I'll just sort of edit the second part of the video. And then come near the end of the video when I'm sort of finishing up editing, I'll actually go back to the intro, and I'll and I'll take clips from later in the video and I'll put them here. So a lot of these clips that I use actually come from earlier in the video uh so um like this is probably a clip that i use later in the video and um it, what's good about that is it actually it actually sort of pays off later like i don't know how it pays off but because because i've used these images later in the video it'll pay off so it's sort of it's my little trick for <laughs> making things pay characters, off better. characters who are only seen in one like for example this image of captain baxter i didn't just download captain baxter for the intro i actually used this image later in the video so that's an example of it. Or characters who... Like this, again, this image of Albert I use later in the video. So. ...were exclusive to Audrey's layouts. So yeah, this is going to be a complicated one, to say the least. I'm not perfect, and I might get some things incorrect. So... <laughs> I, again, I love... That was like, no, I didn't... When I was writing that line, I did not think of using that footage. You know, so... Yeah, that's funny. If you were a railway series purist... Go Another joke I have in this video is... I always use the same image of Audrey looking disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, just a funny, just a funny thing. I I originally wanted to download like a bunch of images of Audrey, but where if I can save time, I will. So like, uh, it, like if I if I mention Audrey like once or twice, then I'll usually download one image of him, and I'll just use that image to thread the video, so it saves time downloading multiple images of Audrey. Going into hate this video before even watching it. I love this image of um. <laughs> Sir Handel, like with all these people around him, I was like, when I found this image, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, that's exactly what it's like to be like a YouTuber and like having a bunch of people yelling at you. I was like, that's that's the perfect image. Anyway. Please take this video with a pinch of salt. Ah, uh, that line about a pinch of salt is um, very. Uh, I'll get into that later. I'm perfectly fine with criticism, so long as it's constructive criticism. So, with all that out of the way, let's begin. Starting off with the man himself, Scar Lowy. Yeah, so obviously this this bit here with Scarlowy crashing into the um, snow that was another thing. Like when I when I initially envisioned the the video, I knew exactly what I was going to have this part pay off at because this is a payoff to the intro. Scarlowy and Renaeus's family. Just want to say, just want to point out that these images are by uh, Hodge. Uh, Edgar Hodge, and they are lovely. They're like my favorite. So images. in order to understand the Scarloy Railway family tree, we must understand the Talachin Railway. In real life, the engine that Scarloy was based on was Talachin. She was built in 1864 by Fletcher Jennings and Company, and was a one-off design for the Talachin Railway, meaning she was the only one of her kind. So I'm sure you're all wondering, if Talachin was one of a kind, then how does Scarloy himself exist? Well, in the Railway series canons, so um, what I like to do is I like to have, um, like when I'm using, sometimes I like to shake up the images a bit. So like, uh, for, for example, this photo of four little engines, um, it's, it's sort of, it's like a JPEG of a book, but I kind of have a turning to kind of make it feel a little more distinct from the other footage, footage in the video. Scarloe was built at the exact same time as Tal Klin, as you can see in this illustration with Tal Klin and Scarloe at Fletcher Jennings and Company. Scarloe's history pretty much parallel. Oh, these 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 photos here, these are great. Um, these are from the My Sodor Library books, and they actually they actually adapted these the the, the railway series stories of Scarloe, like the ones they didn't adapt in TV in the TV series. And I always was so confused. Like when I was younger, because I, I loved these books. I love Scarloy's book. Um, and I always wondered, I always thought that there was like a, a an episode that I just missed in the TV series because I hadn't really seen much of series four. Um, so I'll always be mad that they never adapted these stories because they look so cool. I mean, I get I guess why, because, you know, they're they would have needed to make a bigger, you know, prop and it probably would have only happened in series five. And you know yourself. But um, this I'm so sad that they didn't adapt these stories in CGI. And that's kind of my little callback to these books because I love them. Talakin's history. For example, Talakin was... And this image is ripped directly from the Talakin uh, Railway YouTube channel. 
Um, so I actually maybe I should link them in the description. But uh, sure, look, a set of tra yeah, well, trailing wheel. These images were given to me by my friend Ben. Um, uh, when he heard that I was doing a railway series Scarlowy family tree video, he sent me a bunch of images uh, of like Talchin and uh, Dolgok, like in their old like old versions of them. So like he was a big help on his video too. And Skarloey was later given a set of trailing wheels. Calhoun started out without a cab before getting one, and Skarloey started out without a cab before getting one. They're also both named after the railways they're from, and I'm only scratching the surface with how many parallels there are with these two engines, but needless to say, there are a lot. While I like that Audrey- Again, you, once he notices you can't unnotice it, this image of Audrey is just the same image I use every single time I talk about Audrey. It's so funny. <laughs> paid homage to the Talcon Railway in his books. I still find it incredibly odd that in the canon of the railway series, there are basically two identical railways. Yeah, this is something that's always kind of bothered me. Um, the way that the, the basically these two railways are identical in the canon of the railway series. Um, now, I've mentioned this on Twitter before, and I have been pointed out that actually there are quite a few differences, and they they aren't exactly clone railways, so I get that. But still, it is weird to me anyway that like you have all the all the bases of the engines are identical, like all the locations are very similar. You know, it's just it's just a bit weird to me. You know, like in the canon of the railway series. But I get why Audrey did it. You know, it's just a lot of a lot of my issues with that are addressed in this video. So yeah, I was actually thinking about doing a full video about that, but like. I don't know if I need to, honestly, since I kind of already addressed it here, but sure, never, never say never. Who just also happen to have the same local roster, the same engine base. You know, all these images are from the wiki. Um, these are both by Hodge. Um, you'll, you'll have some great finds on the wiki, like if you go to like the Railway Series pages and all that. Like, honestly, just half, all of my images, what am I saying, come from, directly from the wiki, you know? So it's all about just finding, you know, the right images and the ones that sort of, you know, suit the video the best, you know? Like these, these images of Talchin and Skarloey, for example, were sourced directly from the wiki. ...and the same history, <laughs> like, yes, there are a few different... Yeah, this is, this is one example that was brought up to me on Twitter about how, um, and this is true, by the way, that like, uh, in the, the Talchin railway was trying to get to the lake of Talchin, I think, um, because if you actually go to the the railway, you'll notice that there's a big massive lake there, uh, but there's no railway around it because the railway was building up to it, but never made it. Um, so this in in the railway series canon, uh, the railway actually makes it all the way to the lake. So that's that's probably the main example that people would go to. Um, so I just I, tr I threw it in there, you know, just just you know to give them a bone or whatever, you know, to like make them happy because I don't like to I don't like to completely show only one side of my videos, you know. I like to kind of as much as I would like to show only my side, you know. I think it is good to kind of throw people a bone in a sense, you know, kind of kind of represent all all di versions of dialogue, you know. It's it's an important part of um, you know video making, you know, especially. Um, because people want to be heard, you know, like you can't just, you can't make a video about the Scarlet Railway and not want to have people's voices heard, you know, it's an, it's an important part of video making. ...differences here and there, but by and large, it's basically the same railway, which I find kind of funny, but I digress. So, this is <laughs> This is also a risky thing, um, because we're only two minutes and 41 seconds in, I know we've been talking for like 10 minutes now, but it was kind of risky for me to, you know, take take nearly three minutes just to get to the family tree, you know, because usually you'll notice with my videos, especially a video called Scarlet Railway Family Tree, I usually try to get to the family tree fairly quickly. Um, and especially with that little part there about the Scarlet Railway and how it's a bit weird, I, I was taking a risk there, so yeah. Scarloey on the Scarloey Railway family tree, and this is where his twin Talchlin is. Now their designer was Henry A. Fletcher, and unfortunately for the life of me, I couldn't find a photo of him. I, I actually, the funny thing is, I was looking for that photo, and I actually, I think I DM'd Luke Ryan asking for the photo, but um, uh, unfortunately he didn't get back to me, probably because there wasn't a real photo, um, but... Uh, he did actually, as soon as the video aired, he did actually <laughs> text me. So that was quite funny. Um, saying that he actually enjoyed the video. I was actually, I was surprised that Luke Ryan had even watched it. Um, there's actually, there, there's a lot of stories like that where like people I really enjoy, like their content or I really enjoy what they do or what they make. And then I, then they actually like comment on the video or they make something. So especially considering that Luke Ryan works for the Talcon Railway, the fact that he'd seen the video and enjoyed it, that was a, 
that was a that was a sigh of relief i was like oh good like it was because i was slightly worried that you know no i wasn't worried that luke ryan would say anything but i was just kind of worried like what railway series fans would say about this video so um I'm, I'm glad that i got the thumbs up from him um i haven't seen too many comments from railway series fans i got one or two but like for the most part the ones i know kind of stayed quiet so either that's a good thing or it's a bad thing but usually when something's good about the railway series people usually say something so hey i guess uh anyway <laughs> moving on henry a fletcher is credited with being the designer of talquin and scarloe making them talquin fletcher and scarloe fletcher respectfully now while jennings helped build the locos unfortunately jennings isn't credited as their designers and so for that reason i did not include jennings as their surname feel free to disagree with me but i just wanted to be consistent with the other family tree video you know, I, 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 I really did go back and forth on whether or not I should have called them uh, Scarloe Jennings Fletcher or Scarloe Fletcher Jennings because they are always known as Fletcher Jennings locomotives. Um, and I really, really wasn't certain about doing that. But, um, you know, sometimes a lot, a lot of the times with videos, you kind of have to pick a lane. And so I kind of, what I did for that in that instance was I just looked back at my old videos and I was like, well, I picked a lane in the, in the Rebecca video or the Gordon video, so I may as well be consistent, you know? So that's it. That's an example of me picking a lane, essentially. Now in CGI, they gave Scarloe a Welsh accent. If your wheels aren't whirling, you aren't being a really useful engine. But Haven and went straight to soda. Of course, we have Scarloe's brother, Reneus. Now, Reneus is a. What did you do? <laughs> oh, this is so funny. So, originally, this segment was going to um, have a cameo from uh, some of my Welsh friends. So, originally, I, I actually DM my friend Sam, and I was actually in a video. Uh, his name is Insane Edward. And uh, he actually appeared in my I Lost My Car Keys video, and I appeared in his. Um, uh, what was it? My Luke. His, his video about Luke. And so for this scene here, I wanted to I wanted to get like some Talclin Railway Series fans to kind of jump into the video, and I wanted them to like criticize me or something or just sort of lampshade the fact that I was saying Reneus instead of Renius because I really didn't want to say Renius for the whole video. So uh, this was kind of my way around that. But then as I was pitching that idea. Um, and as I was writing the script for the video, I suddenly thought, how funny would it be if the scene where, like, the Scarlowy engines get crossed at Thomas is actually <laughs> Railway Series fans getting crossed at me for saying Reneus instead of Reneus. So this was actually the first segment I edited from the video. I edited this whole thing together and I and I played it out in real time and it was so funny. And I, like, I think I even sent the video into the, the group chat and all the lads found it very funny. Well, some of them did. I don't, I don't only a few responded, but still. I thought it was really funny and I even reading some of the comments saying about how they thought it was like really funny I, I I was quite proud of that you know so yeah I'm happy with that I I series and wait a fire choir is go back to your branch line ugh what's next I'll have to pronounce fire choir is fecker <laughs> yeah so in the railway series for some reason uh farker like that that some people uh, some railway series weirdos say that like farquhar is actually farker and this is only because of the will willie russian rushton oh i forgot his name i because a railway series person a railway series narrator pronounced it as farker instead of farquhar and but there's actually audio if you look it up there's if you look up reverend audrey farquhar there's actually audrey there's actually audio of audrey saying farquhar the way that we say farquhar so that was just another little joke I threw in there. Also, I try for every single video, and maybe not every single video, but I try to always stick in just a Father Ted reference, just as a reoccurring joke in my channel. Yeah. This is Scarloe's brother, and is also based on an engine from the Talcon Railway. Number two, also known as Dolgok, was the second engine to arrive at the Talcon Railway, and he was built at Fle yeah, yeah, yeah. of Dol How How Chloe and Reneus are Ruplets? Just two sets of twins who happen to live on each other's railways with each other. I, I find it so weird that, like, they're just identical, you know? Like, they both equally had this history and they both equally did this and that. Now, obviously, when I say that, I'll get Railway Series fans coming and saying, Oh, well, no, they're not exactly equal. They did this at a different date and they did that and Scarloe got his trailing wheel, like, a few months before or whatever, like... I don't care. I don't care about the nitty gritty. By and large, they are basically identical railways and it's weird, okay? In canon, it's just weird. <laughs>
if that makes sense. But wait, they aren't the only versions of Tal Quinn in Dolgok's basis as Skarloey, too, as Jennings look about <sighs> smudger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's like, it's just obligatory that like, in every single smudger appearance, you just have to mention the laugh. Like, about. We also have to talk about... Because usually, when, when people mention smudger in a video, they'll usually just cut the laugh and they'll just make it really loud or something and make it really funny. So, I I I really contemplated even using the laugh, honestly. Um, but I was like, no, I can't, I can't not make a video and not do the laugh because all the people be like, oh, you didn't put in the laugh, you know, so um, I... Basically, I, I tried to do it in a, a bit of a unique way, but it is still kind of standard, where I just sort of have a bunch of spinning images. Out. <sighs> Smudger. <laughs> and also, <laughs> um, the, the, so initially this edit started out as, um, it was just the two spinning Smudger things, and then this, this image of Talchun and Dulgok, um, that wasn't there originally. I actually, I went back a few images and I pulled this over it and I just sort of dragged it going up and down. And then the final image I added was this one with me and Smudger, which actually came later. Um, so I actually, I I edited, as I was editing, I had this image and I went back and replayed the scene and then I added that image after. So yeah, a lot of the, uh, this has been revised a few times. So like usually when I'm editing, I'll revise it and revise it and revise it and um, until it feels right, you know. So this is a good example of a scene that I've revised a lot, you know, because it's it's kind of, it's kind of going off script in a sense. So it's important that, yeah. <laughs> Who is the TV series equivalent? So like there's a lot of scenes that I won't revise like for example scenes like this scenes here where I'm just showing clips and just images of like smudger or whatever those scenes usually won't be revised they'll just be like those are the scenes and that's it um, but the, the the scenes where like something significant or something important happens those are usually the most revised scenes in the in the video equivalent of number two on the mid sodor this is probably about the point where all the railway series fans click off the video <laughs> now smudger is basically a meme at this point we've all made the jokes we've all done the ha -ha 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 smudger laugh but Smudger just laughed. <laughs> so that's actually, that is a real clip. Like, that is not edited or anything. That is a genuine clip of me at the, the top of the line at the, at the Talhun Railway recording Smudger. And and me just, sa I just said that line. I wasn't even with friends or anything. I just said that line. And people around me, this is at an extravaganza, just laughed. So, yeah. <laughs> it's it's pretty funny. It, that wasn't scripted or anything. So that that isn't edited or scripted. It's just it's just a genuinely funny moment. Um, in the TV series. Also, I think I used that clip in my car keys video. I believe so. If I go back, I think I did. Yeah. Series. Instead of making a new model, they just repainted Reneus into a green. Yeah, you can really tell with the red around the cab and the windows. Yeah, that's true. If you look, if you look at the back of Smudger. Uh, and look, look around the windows or even just look at the paint you can kind of see red bits it's very clear that they just made like Reneus they just repainted Reneus in like yeah so it's pretty obvious um I suppose because he was only going to be on screen for like 13 seconds so they didn't really care that much but yeah in color I guess because he was also the number two of the Scarloe railway I guess I don't know but for some reason they still gave him an American accent like even in the UK dub <laughs> Now I listen Dookie, who worries about a few spills? Now I was a little worried here because um there was actually some cut dialogue that I had here because I, I for there was this in this segment here, um I talked a little bit about number two on the Midsoda. I talked a little bit about how he's American and about how he's his name was Stanley and um but that, that dialogue got cut because I wanted to keep the flow of the video. I felt like I was too focusing too much on Stanley a bit in that segment, so I, I cut that audio. Um yeah, because usually most of the most of the cutting of scenes doesn't come when dialogue is ha happens. I'll usually I'll always edit the audio first, and then and then the if if audio doesn't feel right or if I feel like it's taking up too much time, I usually cut it. So um, what happened when I cut that audio about Stanley was I was slightly worried that people in the comments would say or start mentioning about how no oh he's he's based on Stanley and he's an American locomotive and all that. But thankfully, I don't think I got any comments like that. So the cut was actually good but yeah but this 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 line here where i talk about smudger being american despite not having a basis i actually did mention about stanley earlier but that got cut you know so just before but anyway i don't know why they gave him an american accent since his basis is very clearly not yeah that's always kind of bothered me about smudger like because for the most part all of the engines in the uk dub have have you know british accents so it's kind of weird 
that he's the one outlier. I guess him and Flynn. But like at least with I, like he's so in the canon in the model series fa- canon, he's meant to be American, and that's just weird to me because he's obviously not an American build, you know. So it's just it just annoys me. Not from America, but that's kind of the implication. But regardless, he is still a TV series canon engine, so he goes here as Smudger Fletcher. However, as much as the Railway series fans like to complain about Smudger, technically Audrey- Again, the image of Audrey, this just image just constantly. Uh, I don't think I, I don't think anyone noticed, but um, I just love it. It's so funny. Uh, it just keeps on reappearing throughout the video, like just, just staring into my soul, like, what are you doing, Adam? Why are you making this? video <laughs> make his own version of smudger believe it or not the number seven engine on the mid soda railway was actually another fletcher jennings loco with the amazingly creative name of jennings <laughs> after the workshop he came from pushing him on the family tree as jennings fletcher Okay, bit of an ironic name there. Now, to be clear, Jennings was only present on the Mark 1 layout of the Midsoto Railway, so he's more than likely not... Ah, uh, yes, this image here. So, before even editing the video, I actually messaged uh, my friend Alex, or the Midland Engine, or, yeah, the Midland Engine, um, and um, I said, hey, you know, I'm doing a video on Jennings. Uh, no, sorry, I'm doing a Scarlow Family Tree video. Would I be able to use your Jennings? Because I, di I didn't think I'd have any images for Jennings. But it turned out that I actually had enough. But I felt kind of bad, you know, because um, I already asked Alex and he said yes. And then I was like, I f I'd feel kind of bad if I asked him for using his image and then it wouldn't even show up in the video. So um, that's why I kind of threw this in here last second. Um, actually was, actually, uh, yeah, so that's why, that's why that's, um, that's why that's there. And then, but I still decided to include him. Still though, it's, oh, it's really good by the way. This is, yeah, because in the Railway series, he's blue, he's got the number seven here, he's got, his name is here, so this is pretty, pretty dead on for Jennings. So yeah, fair play Alex, it's a good edit, like. Anyway, since he is technically an Audrey character. However, I do find it a bit ironic how much Railway Series fans hate- This is true, this is funny, you know, like, everyone goes on about how much they hate Smudger, and they go on about, oh, Smudger, he's useless, he's terrible, he's all this and that, but, like, how can you- what I don't understand is, like, how can you hate on Smudger as much as you hate on Smudger when Jennings is sitting right there, like, because Jennings, if you, like, strip away the pain, strip away the name, Jennings is a Fletcher Jennings locomotive who works on the tal who works on um, the Mid Soto Railway. That that is who he is. And Smudger is exactly the same thing. He is exactly that. Now, obviously, there's some there's some baggage that comes with Smudger because he replaced you know he replaced Stanley in the TV series, and you know like he's a rough rider when Reneus's model was never a rough rider. Um, so there's things like that, I kind of get it, but like, still, like, it's a bit, it's a bit hypocritical, you know, when like, Audrey had, like, seriously, can, if you're a Railway Series fan, can you please leave a comment or make a tr Twitter thread about how wrong I am for comparing these two completely different characters who are basically the same, but look, I'm j I just find a bit of a double standard, or whatever. <laughs> Hate on Smudger when Jennings is sitting right there, but hey, I'm not the one with double standards. <laughs> you see that? I wasn't sure if I should put that line in there, because, like, the line about double standards, because, you know, it's like, who am I to say whether you have double standards or not? But I left it in, just to be a little cheeky, you know. <laughs> but don't let those Smudger deniers tell you otherwise. Oh, this segment was so funny, like, the whole Smudger deniers thing, like, where I'm like, and this is this is what really where, I, this is a part of my, you know, YouTube channel that I don't really lean into nearly enough, but, like, my name is Thomas Theorist. And I never touch upon theories, or I never touch, or I never act like a conspiracy theorist. So, like, this is a rare example where I actually do act like a conspiracy theorist, where I say that Smudger's real, even though he's not. So, a rare example of me living up to my name. Guys, I've actually seen Smudger. This image, I this image lives in my head rent free. I love it. Just me next to Smudger, it's too good. In person, I've actually stood on the footplate of Smudger. So don't you let those Smudger deniers tell you otherwise. The truth is out there. Smudger is real, people. Smudger is real. And that's pretty much. And that that beep cut. Truth is way. out there. Smudger is real, people. Smudger is real. That's the that that beep cut is the same beep cut that I used at the end of my journey beyond the Ireland uh, video. It's also the it's also the same beep beep cut that comes from my Cali fan video. If you if you haven't seen this on my community tab, um, I mentioned that I'm in a video with Cali fan. Um, you should definitely check that out because I edited this video at the same time, which is why this also has a beep cut in it because I reused that beep cut from that video here. 
And that's pretty much all of the Fletcher Jennings family tree. However, there is still one more Canon Thomas character related to them, and he is Captain Back by Fletcher Jennings. Him, Captain Back. Yeah, and there was also um, I also had a bit of cut line here about Captain Baxter. Um, I mentioned in the uh, I want to say. No, no, I mentioned in the video about how Captain Baxter uh, was used as, like, an engine in the Muppets movie, but I cut that because, like, why <laughs> why would I need to mention that, you know? So, yeah, I cut that. Fletcher on the family. Clint technically had only ever one of him, Scarloe's family tree. I think it's time to move on to Sir Handel. Sir Handel's family tree. All right, so Sir Handel... <laughs> <laughs> so that music, the music I used here is from Despicable Me. And the reason I use that music, there's a very specific reason why. It's because in that song, you know, I'm having a bad, bad day. It's about time that I get my way. That song, there's a line where he says that he's steamrolling whatever he sees. And that he's, you know, Despicable Me. So, the line, like, obviously, the first, the first thing I cut to here is, like, steamroller. So that's the that's the that's the pun there I'm that I'm going for. Also, Sir Handel is despicable, and yeah, so it's just it's all around a perfect theme uh, for Sir Handel. Um, I had actually originally, well, not originally, but I also considered using the Diary of a Wimpy Kid music um, here, um, and but I felt the Despicable Me one. I kind of knew, like when I, from when I started editing this part, I kind of, I put the music in and it was just, it was like one of those decisions to just, it just worked, you know, like a lot, especially with video editing, you know, sometimes, sometimes things don't really work and other things, other times things just really come together. And this was a, this was a video that I felt really came together. Um, yeah. So very proud of this one. Um, and this was really funny with the whole steamroller thing. <laughs> but anyway is the third engine from the Scarloe Railway. He was bought to the railway alongside Peter Sam when Scarloe and Renault... Also, I should also mention that the background changes as well here. And that was intentional because, I, I, first of all, I wanted to kind of shake it up a bit, but also um, I wanted the background to match the colour of the family tree. So that's why the backgrounds change. And also it kind of helps break up the video as well. So like for Sir Handel's part, it's all blue. For Peter Sam's, it's all green, and for Rusty's, it's all orange, and so yeah, it just it helps break up the video a bit more. Nas needed help. Very similarly to how a Falcon and a Cur Stewart came to help out the tower. Clip. I just love that music. It's so good. It goes so well with the video. You know, I was slightly worried. I thought I might get a copyright strike or something, but apparently not. So uh, yeah, at least well for now. Anyway, we'll, we'll we'll find out later. But hopefully, hopefully, I won't get any strikes. Um, but I did credit the music in the description anyway. So. Um, yeah, I always try to give credit to people, um, where I, where I can, um, yeah. How convenient that these railways have so Having Sir Handel, I will give Audrey credit for changing Sodor as Falcon, he of him. Meaning Sir Handel would go under from the Talcon Hughes. Unlike Talcon, they are twins, making his full name Sir Hayden Hughes. I love their surname, Sir Handel Hughes, Henry Hughes, Sir Handel Hughes, Sir Hayden Hughes. Handle Hughes. It just it just rolls off the tongue, you know. It's really good. It's it's a sometimes the surnames are a little weird, but other times they really work. And in Sir Handel's case, it really works too. Also, I just find it so funny that this is technically Sir Handel's dad. Like, it's so funny. Like he just just the the fact that this guy is his dad is so funny to me. Anyway. Unlike Talquin or Dolgok, who were both one-off builds, making their duplicates slightly weird. Sir Handel and Sir Hayden had. There was also Proteus. So, a bit of stress. Although, coincidentally, Sir Hayden had his own It should also image where you can see the green just below him. So, the model crew obviously you Technically, Proteus, I guess, makes him kind of a hybrid build. I don't even know if that would... Yeah, that was another thing um, where, like, I wasn't sure if, like, Proteus would, like, connect the family trees since he technically had a rebuild. Well, not a rebuild, but, like, he had wheels that belonged to the Curse Stewart. So, I wasn't sure if it was, like... Proteus, uh, Proteus, Hughes, Curse Stewart, whatever. But I realized that actually, technically, for my Gordon family tree video, I did have Gordon down as, you know, Gordon Gresley, even though technically, if you really want to be a Railway Series Stan, he actually has, um, Stanier wheels, so, or Stanier, Stanier, Bay, or whatever Audrey thing. So, yeah, I kind of, I said, fuck it, I'll make it, I'll make it so that it's, um, 
that it's just it's just the Hughes family tree because really who's going to care you know he's a Hughes he's a Hughes nobody's going to say he's a he's a cursed Stewart. I don't even know why honestly I should have just cut this dialogue honestly because I think it kind of dragged the video but anyway work IRL but whatever there is one more falcon in the franchise and this is another thing I was kind of worried about mentioning because Albert canonically this was one version of Albert so I wasn't even sure if I should have mentioned him um but no I, I'm actually glad that I mentioned him since he is whatever he is canon just not in this form but you know he isn't really albert hughes he's albert whatever his real basis is yeah so yeah and his name is albert who much like jennings is another one-off midsoder engine albert was the number five engine on the midsoder railway and was based off a falcon loco making him albert hughes mark different low mark two now we move on to peter sam peter sam's family tree Oh, I should also mention about these these images that I use. So when like when for the title image, I wasn't really sure what to go for. Um, like I kind of knew that I wanted it to be dead silence and then it would kick into the music. That's something I knew, but I wasn't sure like what sort of images I should use. Um, but I I realized that these there's these lovely drawings by like Laura something, I forget her name, or Lorraine, oh I forget her name, but she she makes these amazing drawings. Um and she made them like for the official show, like for the YouTube channel, like um uh, for what was it like they 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 read railway series books for a Mr. Perkins segment and they re-illustrated these images um in the TV series style and I love them they're so cool um and so I wanted to use them in videos so that's why it's being used here and it's it's very nice look in my opinion Three. Peter Sam is a cursed Stewart tattoo class oh yes also I'm sure you've all noticed that the Mr. Bean theme music from um my Scarlowe, not my Scarlowe, for my Peter Sam video, where I use Mr. Bean's music for that video. Um, I made sure to use that here because, you know, it was a nice little payoff to my Sir Handel, not my Sir Handel, my Peter Sam video. Um, I always like to try payoff videos if I can, so like, you know, because, uh, yeah, like with content, you know, I think it's important that like, it, it, there's a logical, there's, you know, like each video is kind of building on the other, you know, like there's kind of, there's a there's a bit of cohesion there, you know, um, and so I I like the idea that I was kind of paying off my uh, what's his name Peter Sam video um, with this with this music. I was bought to Scarloy Railway around the same time as Sir Handel, and what do you know? Peter Sam, like everyone else on the Scarloy Railway, also parallels the Tal Clint. And this is the that's the original image, uh, by the way. Compared to Laura's one. Where Thomas was a cursed Stuart tattoo class who was brought to Talcon Railway around the same time as Sir Hayden. So, this is Peter Sam on the family tree. And this is where Nicolas Cage... Uh, uh, I <laughs> so that, that line about Nicolas Cage. Um, so, on the Talcon Railway, that's a real face that they use. Um, and it just looks kind of like Nicolas Cage. Um, I think uh, that, that joke has been made a million times before. But I just love the idea that, like, in the Family Tree video, when I'm revealing his face, like, I refer to him as Nicolas Cage. That was, that was really funny. Um, I'm really, I'm really happy with that joke. That's, that's a, that's a specific joke for, like, people who've been to Talcon Railway. Uh, for anyone who hasn't, they're just gonna be, like, confused. They're gonna be like, what? Why did he mention Nicolas Cage? So, yeah. I mean, Edward Thomas is next to him as his twin. Now, unfortunately... I also, I love the way the music cuts out there, too. So, for the joke... I just, the music kind of goes silent for a second, just to kind of let the joke sink in there a bit. To find the exact person who designed Edward Thomas's basis, as there's only ever one source didn't hang their yeah, Jewish on the I find quite funny. Now, this was actually quite... <laughs> and again, we have this image of Audrey just staring at us. And you notice, each time I use this image of Audrey, I always kind of change it up a bit. Like, for example, before I had it zooming out, other time I was like zoomed in on his face, this time it's scrolling down. So each time I use the image, I always kind of subconsciously try to use the image in a slightly different way, you know. And so I didn't get any comments about Audrey's face being reused a thousand times. So, I mean, I guess I got away with it. <laughs> the thing that Audrey did with the names of his engines, like how Sir Handel was called Falcon after his basis, Trigenic. That last one, but it's definitely Audrey named Smudger after Sir John Smudgerington III. <laughs> yeah, so this this whole line about Sir John Smudrington the third, I, I the joke was basically yeah, I list off a bunch of like real engines, like real locomotives that have had like real bases named after each other, and then I just go for the completely random like like Sir John Smudrington the third, you know, like completely obvious that it isn't real, 
Um, just to just to kind of you know mess a little with railway series fans who take this stuff just a little bit too seriously. Um, just to just to kind of mess with them. And also this image of this guy, I forget his name. I think his name actually is Sir John something. And um, but basically what I did was I was I was trying to find like a really old timey photo of like some guy. And so I just I I actually searched up Sir John Smudgerington the third. And I just said to myself, whatever image comes up, that'll be the image I use. And this is the first image that comes up when you search up Sir John Smudgerington the third. I think his real name is Sir John something else the third. But um, this is the image that comes up when you search that, so I thought it'd be funny just to use it. You probably haven't heard of that last one, but it's definitely real. Trust me. Any <laughs> like, I love that I don't even address it. I don't even say that I, actually I'm messing. Like I said, I'm being serious, even though I'm not. So that's quite funny. Wait, there is actually a third tattoo class in Thomas, and that is Little Bradford. I was really worried about. Oh, also, I should mention that I pronounced Little Little Barford's name wrong. Um, his name is actually Little Barford. I was surprised to learn that. I I didn't learn that until comments told me that like I pronounced his name wrong, and I was like, oh feck, it's actually Little Barford, not Little Bradford. Because I even even in the even in the title, I call him Little Bradford, even though it's Little Barford. Um, so that was a surprise to me. I didn't know that. I because I I've looked at this character again. I've dyslexia, so. I'm sure, as many people have pointed out many times, I have a lot of spelling errors in my videos. I have a lot of um, issues with reading words sometimes. So, you know, I think you can probably forgive me. But, um, yeah, little little Barford is his actual name. But I was, there, I was a little worried about using him in the video because, like, magazine characters are just a whole other field of stuff. So, like, I was kind of worried that, okay, if I use this magazine character, I'm probably going to miss out on some other random one. And I did get a few comments mentioning about Sydney. Uh, so Sydney is kind of like this, like what do you call him? A, he's kind of like again. I looked at his Wikipedia. I looked at his wiki page, but like it, it said that he was a freelance design. So I decided not to add him to the, the thing. But like he looks kind of like a cursed steward, or he looks kind of like a falcon. So I wasn't really sure whether I should add him or not. But since the wiki said freelance, I said screw it. I'm not adding you. So, um, but yeah, he's like the only little Barford is like the only magazine character. That I added to the whole list, um, and I was slightly worried about doing that because I was like, "Oh God, there's probably a whole bunch of other magazine characters who are based on Scarlet Railway engines I just don't know about." But yeah, so I'm taking a bit of a risk there. But I don't think no one's besides Sydney. No one has actually pointed out any other ones that are real. Bird. Little Bradford is a magazine exclusive. Love, it's so it just the video is unwatchable now, isn't it? Because it's 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 right there. It says Little Bradford, and for some reason I'm saying Bradford. But anyway character, who is purple and shuns coal for the Sodor power station. And despite being a magazine character, I think Little Bradford actually works quite well in the canon. If we're to assume that the power station is somewhere up near Pilgot. Again, this is a thing where like, you know, I'm going off script here a bit, like this was written in the script, but I do, I do, I, excuse me, I do go off on a bit of a tangent here um, about my head canon for Little Bradford. And initially, I was thinking about just cutting this whole segment because I didn't really feel like it added anything to the video. Because it's just me going over my head cannon for Little Barford. But then I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> when am I ever going to have a chance to go over my head cannon with Little Barford again? So I decided not to cut it because I was like, really, when is when am I ever going to have a chance to talk about this magazine character? You know, so yeah then it would have totally made sense that Little Bradford was one and of the... Yeah, also this whole headcanon, I think it works perfectly, like, because the mid Sodor is right beside where the uh, power station is in the railway series. And also you have the nearby Kuldi Fell railway, which are all, like, purple and red. So, like, Little Bradford, his story just writes himself. You know, there's some characters like that where, like, their their stories kind of write themselves, and there's other, there's other characters where they just make no sense. So he's a rare example where I think he makes perfect sense in the railway series lore. Midsoder Engines, who was just sold on to the company like Peter Sam. But instead of going to the aluminium works like Peter Sam and Sir Handel, maybe Little Bradford went to the nearby power station instead. Hell, maybe even his purple livery is a reference to the nearby Kuldi Fell Mountain Railway. Perhaps he even brings coal to them. Anyway, my head cannons aside, that would put Little Bradford here on the family tree as Little Bradford Curse Stewart. However, there is two more locomotives on the family tree, and that is Luke. I was surprised. <laughs> when I was when I was doing research for the video, um, I was very surprised to learn that Luke was a cursed steward. Um, I I I I'm embarrassingly old to have realised that. 
Um, cause I never, I never actually looked up his maker. I never really looked into the history of the model, you know, even though I did a video about him, like, um, I never actually, I, I never thought to look into it. So yeah, he's actually a cursed steward as well. Um, so I was, that was, that was one of the few surprises I had in this video where I was like, oh, I didn't know that, that they would be connected. So that was cool. Believe it or not, that's right, Luke and Peter Sam are technically cousins. It turns out that everyone's favorite Irish character. Yeah, also this line here, um, the line, I'm paying a bit of lip service to my old video. So when I say here, this, this shot of Luke and Thomas shunting trucks, uh, this is actually a callback to the last video I made. The Because I always like to try callback to videos. Um, so, for example, this shot of Thomas and Luke shunting is actually the very first shot in the every Irish Thomas character video ranked. Like right after, right after the Father Ted intro, you have this shot of Luke and Thomas shunting. And so I thought, when I mentioned that Luke is my favorite Irish Thomas character, I should have that shot of the, fir the first shot of that video here. So that's kind of a payoff to that. And also, another interesting thing about that video is that it, at the very end of my Greg Tiernan video, this is the very last shot that I use in that video before I cut to the segment where I'm talking to my friend. Um, you know, where we're kind of going through um, line recordings. But yeah, this is the last shot I use of uh, in the Greg Tiernan video. It's the first shot I use in the in the Every Irish Thomas Character Ranked video. And then when I mention how he's my favorite character, I then use this shot here again. So yeah, there's there's loads of little details like that that no one would ever really pick up on. But like, I know that there are little references and Easter eggs. Um, so yeah, <laughs> but no one, no one would ever pick up on this stuff. But you know... Uh, it's it's there if people want to pick up on it, you know. A lot, like a lot of thought goes into these videos, um, more than people would probably realize. Because I really, I, I really do try to think about every single frame and every single you know motion, every clip I use. Like it, a lot, a lot, a lot of thought goes into these videos. Anyway from the series, Luke is in fact a cursed Stuart locomotive. Hell, he was even built in the same workshop that Peter Sam was built in, in the California works in Stoke-on-Trent. So Luke would go here as Luke Cursed Stuart. However, there is one more canon cursed Stuart, and that's Luke's sister, Pixie. Now, Pixie only Now, yeah, Pixie. So there was a cut line here where I mentioned about Teddy Boston. So like Teddy Boston also owned a locomotive called Pixie. And I, I originally mentioned about how Teddy, the, about how this pixie was not to be confused with Teddy Boston's pixie, but then I realized that like only nerdy train fans would know that information, and so like I was thinking, okay, well if only nerdy train fans would know that Teddy Boston had a locomotive called Pixie, then obviously only nerdy train fans would know that this obviously isn't that locomotive. Um, so I cut the line because it was redundancy, you know, so a lot of lines I'll cut in the videos will be usually redundancy lines. So lines that are redundant or don't matter or don't need to be there. Um, yeah, so I tried to make the videos as tight as possible. Um, so even, even if I record something and even if I say something, if it doesn't need to be there, just cut it. That is like, that is like the fundamental rule of editing. Like if the line doesn't need to be there, if you don't need to say it, if even like, just cut it, just get rid of it. Like, cause you're just wasting people. You're just wasting your time. You're wasting other people's time. Just cut the line. Um, cause I, there's so many videos I watch where I'm like, why are you telling me this? Why are you feeding me this information? How is this relevant? You know? So it's, it's all about keeping things relevant. It's always about, you know, kind of making sure that everything you're saying is important or is you know, like near enough the topic, you know? Um, yeah. Cause I don't like to waste people time, you know? Cause yeah. Like, why would you waste my time? Like, Early counts as a canon character, as she was shown in a railway series activity book, but it still technically counts, meaning Pixie Curse Stewart just barely made it onto the list. And yeah, that's pretty much the Curse Stewart family tree in Thomas. Now, onto Rusty. Rusty's family tree. Again, this shot of Rusty is, um, it's, uh, it's of Laura, it's Laura's drawing, I forget her last name, Laura Marshall or something, but it's another, it's actually the image, it's the exact same image I used for Peter Sam's, but it's just more zoomed in on Rusty, so yeah. Um, but also, I like, I kind of, the reason I did that was because, you know, we just finished talking about Peter Sam's segment and kind of moved on to Rusty's, so I kind of like the idea of having the segments bleed into each other a bit with the images. Um, so it's subtle, but it's there. Tree. So, in the Railway series, Rusty is the little black... Also, I should mention that the this this thing that they're doing with Rusty, where they're sort of, the, you're you're probably wondering what are these two men doing in this image? Um, so this is something I actually learned at the Talcon Railway. But you see, Rusty, I think I believe in this image, Rusty's meant to be broken down or something. 
But um, yeah, so what they're doing is they're actually, they're turning a handle on the side of Rusty to make him move. Um, because this is something I, I when I was at the Talcan Railway, um, the the rusty the rusty there, oh, sorry, Midlander there, he actually wasn't working, and so this guy called Steve, who you'll see in a minute in the video, um, he actually took out this like um, this sort of wind up thing, and he stuck it into the side of Rusty, and he started turning it, and then and then Rusty or Midlander started moving. Like because he was winding, it's like it's like an old thing that like cars do, like where you, it was really cool, and so I don't think I've seen anyone mention this anywhere on the wiki or anything. I guess it's just only a thing that people like at the railway would know. But I thought I found that super interesting. So that's what they're actually doing in this image. So there's a real attention to detail in Audrey's books, because um, I I I don't think I'd heard anyone mention it anywhere. So yeah, I thought I'd mention it here since you know someone at least someone would know. Diesel, who does the maintenance work of the railway, while on the Talaclin railway, Midland. Yeah, so this, these, these are actual, these are things that I filmed back at the second Audrey extravaganza. Um, so, and uh, there's, there's some clips that I think you've probably seen, and other clips you haven't. But um, I like to, where, where possible, I like to use my own footage. So I'm glad that I actually get to f footage that I filmed of Midlander. I'm glad that I'm actually using in the video instead of just using images. So that's kind of cool. Lander is his equivalent. Both of these share this. This shot here, this is kind of, this is so cool. When I found this, um, this, this, this model of Rusty was made by, it isn't the real model, it was actually made by, uh, oh, I want to say Scarloe Modeler or something. Um, but he makes these fantastic replicas of the engines, and those are the real engines, they're so cool. And so, when he was, I think he's got like a nose ring, and he was actually at one of the Tugs Trust events as well. Um, but anyway, so... When I, when I seen Midlander there, I asked him, can I record Rusty next to Midlander? And he was like, yeah, sure, go for it. So that was really cool, getting the shot of Rusty next to, you know, the bigger Rusty that he's based on. That was really cool. And also, I don't think I used this in my original um, How I Met a Fandom video. So it was great to use the footage here. Um, I was so happy when I found it. Uh, so, yeah, pretty cool to see little Rusty with big Rusty. Anyway, moving on same basis. They're both Rust and Hornsby diesels, however they do share quite significant differences. Unlike Midland- Oh, I should also mention, the, the music in the background here is um, actually the same music that I use for every single video where I go to like Wales or I go to the Audrey Extravaganza. I always make sure to use Rusty's theme, because I don't know why, I just it was just kind of a trend that I did. And so I, I like that I'm using it here as well. <laughs> Lander, who was rebuilt in the 1980s, Rusty was never actually rebuilt, which means that the two actually have quite distinctive basis, which I actually kind of like. I, I yeah, I this is this. I agree. I agree with myself. I, I I really like this. I really hate the way that everything's just a clone, and so it's one of the few changes. I know some people are like, oh, I, w I wish Rusty looked old. Like, no, I'm glad he looks different. You know, so, yeah. kind of like that they're not complete clones of each other. You know, and also fun fact, um, I actually had the honor of driving Midlander. Yes, I did. And also, remember earlier how I mentioned about Steve. Um, Remember earlier how I mentioned about Steve? This is Steve here. He's the guy who like put the thing inside of Rusty and turned it. It was really cool. He's actually a sound guy. He's super nice. Um, and he, he, when I was driving Rusty, he was there. He showed me how to drive him. No. And also, fun fact, um, I actually had the honor of driving Midland. So um, let me try and educate you all. Uh, so this is, this is, this is, this little thing here. This is like the gear, I think. So like you put it like, this is like first gear. And like you move this handle that goes into second gear and it goes into third gear. And this is like to this is like the handbrake, I think. And so uh yeah, this is it was so cool. Also, Rusty, the thing about the thing about uh, Midlander is that you actually sit down inside of him. So in this video here, this is me inside Midlander. And this these are actually my legs when I was driving. This is the only footage I have of me driving him. Um and so I'm actually sitting down inside the seat and uh if, yeah, because there's actually a seat that's built inside there, um, and uh, it's pretty cool. Also, I believe this is, uh, if you go back to the Unlucky Tugs, um, Audrey Extravaganza video, um, there's, actually, there, there's actually footage of Nick uh, riding, driving inside Rusty as well, and the actual, the video that Nick actually uses in the video is the video that I took, so I thought that was pretty cool, that, I, that my video made it into a Lucky Tug video, that was pretty cool. Anyway at the second Audrey extravaganza. I also had the honor of driving. This was so cool. Uh, I believe this was filmed by my friend Erin. Um, she makes map videos. Um, but I I love this shot so much. Uh, the shot of me uh, driving Duncan. It's like, 
top five favorite videos that I have. I'm just, I cannot believe that I actually drove the real quotation marks Duncan. Uh, so that's really cool. Driving Douglas as well, which is Duncan's basis. So that was pretty damn cool. Now what's interesting about Rusty is that his name comes from his basis, much like Neil or Stuart, who have already and the E from Hornsby, you get Rusty using the- Yes, this is, this, this is a cool thing as well. Um, you know, sometimes when you're editing videos, they'll come out very differently to how you envision them. So my, I didn't, I wasn't really sure what my vision was for this, but I knew I wanted to do some sort of cool editing thing where like I, I kind of, you know, I show Rustin's name and I show Hornsby names and then it kind of collide together and make Rusty or something. But I was really happy with how this came out. So like, you'll notice here how the Rust from Rustin is, is yellow. Rust from Rustin and the, and you'll notice how the Y is red. And, you know, what do you get when you put yellow plus red? You e get from Hornsby, you get rusty. See, the orange. So, it, 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 uh, it you know, the red the, comes together and it makes orange. So, it's like, just that little, little details like that. They're subtle, but they make, they make a big difference, you know? So, this is Rusty on the family tree, and this is where his maker, Rustin and Hornsby is. Now, since I couldn't find a specific designer for them, I've credited him with a Hornsby. Um, okay. That was funny. Rusty Rustin Hornsby. I was like, what? <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, when I, one, one of the initial things when I was making the video, I was like, I, I knew that was going to be funny. It didn't actually, in the final video, it didn't turn out as funny as I thought it would, but still, it's funny. And since Midlander was also a Rustin and Hornsby, that would make him Midlander Rustin. Now, th there's a bit of trivia here as well. Because um, originally Rusty's family tree, this was going to be it. It was just going to be Rusty and Mid. This was it. Like, it was just going to be Rusty and Midlander. However, I was watching this video about E2s. Um, I forget who made it. It was like a recent video. I had it on my community tab. Um, but I shouted it out on the community tab. Um, and I thought it was really good. Um, it was like breaking down E2s and all that. And about how great they are. Um, and in the video, they mentioned about Salty's basis. And they mentioned about how Salty was a Rustin Hornsby. And this was during editing, by the way. And I was like, hold on a minute. Salty's a Rustin Hornsby? And so I checked the wiki. And nowhere on the wiki did it say that he was a Rustin Hornsby. So I checked the Wikipedia page, and he was. So I was like, why didn't the wiki list this as, a, like, a thing about Salty? I'm so annoyed. It's, uh, it's so... I actually, you'll notice, this is the only time the audio changes throughout the whole video. Like, every, every all the audio before this was, like, the original audio. And it, it cuts here when I talk about Salty. Okay, and since Midland, who is also a brother to Rusty. So remember earlier how I said take this video with... I don't know if you noticed that, but the audio changes slightly there. Because it's it's a different recording session. I Hopefully you didn't notice, but it probably... It might have been slightly noticeable. I don't pinch know. of salt. Well, perhaps I meant that literally. It also, I got to pay off the line about a pinch of salt. You know, so in the, in the opening of the video, I mentioned about this video, take this video with a pinch of salt. And then I actually pay that off here with this line with Salty. So I thought that was funny as well. Turns out that Salty is in fact a Rustin and Hornsby Diesel, who was one of 14 produced. I had to add this in the video after editing, as for some reason the Thomas Wiki didn't list it here on the family tree as Salty Rustin Hornsby. Yeah, I actually kind of find this interesting, like the fact that Salty and Rusty, like they're kind of, because they both end with TYs, you know, and the Salty Rustin Hornsby, Rusty Rustin Hornsby, they actually, they go really well together as like, you know, surnames, you know, they go really, they kind of, it's just interesting, isn't it? Like the idea that Rusty and Salty are cousins, you know, I don't know how to feel about that information. Um... It's, it's, I guess it's kind of interesting. I've just always associated Rusty with like, you know, the Scarlet Railway. So uh, it's kind of just a, just a fun bit of trivia there, you know, that, oh, they're just, they're just cousins, whatever, you know. Which actually kind of suits him as a second name, making salts pretty much Duncan's family tree. Oh boy, the Duncan family tree video. Also, I should mention, I should mention here about how um, Rusty and Duncan are here because, you know, Again, we're coming straight off, we're coming hot off the heels from the, the rusty part, and now we're going into Duncan's segment. So I kind of, I thought, oh, this is per this is the perfect image, because, you know, it's it's the two of them as we're going into his video, so yeah. The Barclay family tree is by far the most complicated one on this family tree. So, yeah. hey, we actually have a f happens to be editing art, but this is a whole nother... Wow, how coincidental. Now, I've heard of life imitating art. Uh, this, is a, this is a good example of like subtle editing. So sometimes I'll do things that are slightly subtle. So with this this thing here, for example, where like I, I mentioned that life is imitating art 
and you'll notice that the image that I use is Duncan in the reflection of the pool because you know life is imitating art you see it's 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 a subtle thing but like little little things like that in my videos there's little there's little easter eggs like that you know <laughs> that nobody nobody would ever notice this is kind of why a commentary track like this is important because nobody no matter how many times you watch the video you'll never you'll never understand my intent you know so little little details like that kind of help people maybe fill in the little context you know but this is a whole nother level. How many parallels can one railway have? Anyway, I've made that joke. I'm moving on from it. So, this is Andrew. How many parallels like to... can one railway have? Anyway, I've made that joke. I always like to use my icon, you know, um, as much as I can, you know, because it's like, it's, um, you know, because like, there's nothing stopping someone from just like taking this video and re-uploading it, you know. Um, don't do that, please. I'd be very mad with you if you did. But, um, uh, so a part of something I like to do sometimes is I like to put my icon inside the video. So it's like, it's like a way of showing, it's like, it's like my label. It's like my stamp. It's like, Hey, I'm here. You know, this is by me. This isn't, you can't just take this. This is me, you know? Um, and I, I haven't, I've, I don't put watermarks on my videos cause honestly, I just find them distracting and annoying, but I have a feeling that I'll probably regret that later because someday someone's going to come along and just rip off all my content as in not as in rip off like as in steal ideas but i mean literally download my videos and just re-upload them like i it, it happens to every creator once in a while so i'm hoping that won't happen with mine but if it does i'll have my icon in there so you know at least at least you'll see my icon you know and obviously my voice it's very distinct so yeah a joke. I'm moving on from it. So, this is Andrew Barclay, and this is where Douglas and Duncan are on the Barclay family tree. I should probably also mention that I only pronounced Barclay right, like, once. Um, I think I tried the whole video, I pronounced it like Barclay, 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 when it's actually Barclay. So, or I believe it's Barclay. So, yeah, another little pronunciation thing. But I don't think anyone's too bothered by that, so, yeah. And since sons inherit their father's names, that would make them W. Andrew Barks only ever mentioned Garloy Railway. There was also number nine, Fred. I should also mention this, that Fred and Alf are not actually Andrew Barclay locomotives. This is like when Luke Ryan messaged me, this was like the first thing he said. He was like, oh yeah, they're not, <laughs> they're not like, um, they're Hunslets, not Barclays. Um, and I'm so annoyed by this because the Thomas Wiki, the stupid Thomas Wiki, for some reason, it listed them as designed by Andrew Barclay. And I told Luke this and Luke was like, yeah, I don't know where they got that from. It's not true. So I was like, yeah, screw you, Thomas Wiki. Where I don't where you got the information from, I don't know. You probably just made it up, but it's very annoying because you made this video incorrect. So, yeah, um, but they are actually Hunslets and... Um, What's more annoying, and Luke pointed this out to me too, is that since they're Hunslets, I could have easily made another family tree called, like, Freddy's Family Tree. And, like, I have, like, you know, Fred and Freddy a part of the Hunslet family tree. Which actually, when I think about it, that actually, that's actually kind of funny because Fred, it, like, Fred Hunslet and Freddy Hunslet, that would be, like, a funny payoff because they've both got very similar names. Um... So, yeah, it, it's, it's just a big shame that Thomas Wiki had to list that information as incorrect. I must actually change that um, so that it isn't incorrect for some poor other person. Um, oh, I should also mention that this image is by Midlands Engine, um, who, Alex, thank you again very kindly for letting me use this image. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's just a shame that the, this whole segment is incorrect. The Diesel, who is now, Fred also has, ha! Huh. Get it? Lord Alf and Fred? I see what you did there, all diesels, implying that Fred was too Douglas and- Yeah, so this, this whole thing is incorrect. The Fred, Alf and Fred are not Barclay locomotives. They're not cousins to Duncan. Just want to get that out there. They are Hunslets. They are actually cousins with Freddy. So, yeah, this is, this is an error I should have- Because uh, I honestly- I knew that they were Hunslets. I knew that they were Hunslets, but for some reason- I trusted the fact that the wiki said that they were designed by Andrew Barclay when they weren't. So yeah, screw you, wiki. I'm just kidding, wiki. I love you. I love all the information. Please don't delete my channel, wiki, please. But that's not the weirdest connection to the family tree. We also have Ivo, Hugh, and Tom Rolt. Yeah, this whole thing just confused me. I might just skip over this because I, I pretty much say everything I need to say in the video. Uh, I talked to Luke about this and he said that apparently David Hugh wasn't actually the designer. Like, he was, he was just in charge or something. Um, I forget exactly what he said, but um, 
so yeah, apparently Ivo Hugh was just built on site. Um, and the, the Barclay parts, apparently, they just, they were made by, you know, Croven's Gate. So, yeah, so that was, that was, that's the in-universe ex explanation for Ivo Hugh. Um, it's unclear as to who made the plan, so it's possible that Ivo Hugh could just be a base, because maybe they just used his plan, so maybe that's just the explanation. But I did love how confusing this whole segment was, because it is a bit weird how Ivo Hugh exists, or how he's connected to him, despite not having anything to do with him, so yeah. Full name, Bill Twins? Like, how does this work? Like, what an amazing make and but uh, all the more weirder. But wait, that's not the only Andrew Barkley on the list. I should also mention that one thing, th this whole part of the video just came together so well, honestly. Like, because uh, I think what made it come together really well was Duncan's team. Uh, because when I was making this s segment and I put in Duncan's team, I got really excited because I was like, ah, oh, yes. Because Duncan's team also happens to coincide with this confusing part about the, you know, the about what you call it, the Tom Tom Ralt and Ivo Hugh and how they work. And then having Samson at the end is like the punchline, you know, so it just it just came together really well. Um especially with Duncan's team playing in the background because it's very, you know, troublesome and very yeah, you, so it just it just came together. So I'm really proud of it. Yeah. We have one more, and that's Samson. Yep, just when I thought it couldn't get any weirder, Samson Barclay is somehow a cousin to Fred, Duncan, and parts of Tom Ralt? Of course he fucking is. Also, I had to put this line in about saying, of course he fucking is, because uh, I have to, I guess I just have to curse in every single video, even though I don't really like cursing. Well, I guess I've kind of warmed up to the idea of cursing since I started working in the workshop, but I've, I, I've had to just throw in a curse in every video now, basically, because any you'll notice that any video where I don't have a curse, uh, it get marks for kids. And even if it does get marked for kids, I can say, hey, look, here's where I cursed so that I can link it to them. So like basically now every single video I make has to have a curse in it. So this is this is this is the spot where I put the curse and it's fairly near the end. So I'm not too worried about it. But yeah, <sighs> moving on to Duke's family tree. Oh, that ending. I think that ending of like Duncan's whistle or whatever, the, the music, the way it pays off there at the end, it's just so funny. Like I love, I love how that segment came to My favorite, honestly, my favorite segment in the whole video, it just paid off so perfectly. Duke's family tree. So, Duke also has some family in the show. Duke is a George England class. Duke, second name, or George England, is bizarre canon. Still around today, but I omix or anything. Yeah, so these these two these last two family trees were kind of afterthoughts in that like I wasn't too passionate about them, so they're they're fairly quick. Like I just sort of fly through them, you know. Um, I didn't have too much to say about like you know Duke or you know Mighty Mac. I just kind of it was very quick, very matter of fact, you know. Just sort of you know they weren't the reason I made the video basically. So yeah, I, I just sort of flew through them. First seen in series nine and was designed. Also, this music by George Percival Spooner. Oh, I did that that joke. I love that joke. Um, this is this is this is an this is an example of where like I'll make a joke in editing where like, because like I was editing and it was like George Percival Spooner and I was like, <laughs> like wouldn't it be funny if I just showed like George from Thomas, Mister Percival, and the Spooner family tree. No, not the Spooner family tree. The 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 Peter Griffin house that lives at, on Spooner Street. So. I thought that was funny, you know, just a little, just a random side gag there. I just, I like to throw those in if I can, you know. Pushing Mighty Mac here as Mighty Mac Spooner. However, it never rear a part uh, I Spooner family tree. And finally, we have Mirrodin Erm Rays. I pronounced that incorrectly. I believe it was Merdithin Emerus. That's how it's actually pronounced. Uh, Luke Ryan, <laughs> he was very kind to um, tell me how it was actually pronounced. So, like, apparently the two Ds. According to Luke, uh, the two Ds make a TH sound, so th. Uh, so Merithin, as opposed to Meridin. And M rays is pronounced as M ris. So Merithis. Wait, was it? Merithin M ris. So that's how it's actually pronounced. And Luke was kind enough to help me. Um, but that was only after the fact. So maybe, maybe I should have run the video by Luke before doing that. But anyway. Um, yeah, so that, that's the actual proper pronunciation, but in the video, I just fucking winged it. I didn't care. I was like, I was like, look, I know I'm going to say it wrong. I couldn't find anything online saying it correctly. So I was like, screw it. 
I'm just pronouncing it whatever way it is. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. That's That was my philosophy with that. I didn't care. And he'll also notice I only mention it once. I mention it here. And then when I'm showing him in the family tree, I don't actually say his name. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I, just, I just had to get it. I had to just bite the bullet basically in that scenario. Uh, I apologize if I butcher that name, who, much like Prince, also appeared in Railway Series Annuals, making him somewhat canon the Thomas series. Now, of course, much like Prince, there are other double-ended Farleys in real life, but for the sake of simplicity, I only included ones that were mentioned in the canon of Thomas. And yeah, that's pretty much the Spooner family tree in Thomas. So yeah. That was pretty much the Scarloy Railway Family Trees. I was not expecting this video. Yeah, and then there's the outro. Um, often, what I like to do with the... I always make sure that the intro and the outro music are the same. So, for example, the intro music was with streamlining and the outro music was with streamlining. And this is actually... I, I, the, the Family Tree, like, whatever happens in a Family Tree video, you can almost be certain that the intro and the outro will always be the theme of streamlining. That's just the sort of thing that I set up. Um... It's the same thing with my uh, crew review videos, where like the music, the music I use for the intro is going to always be the same, um, unless unless there's an exception, obviously. Um, so it's just a sort of way of keeping the content consistent and kind of kind of giving a sense of familiarity with the content, you know. Um, and yeah, another thing with these family tree videos is that like the thing about it is it never actually started out as a series. I wasn't planning on having this be a series on the channel. Um, it just sort of worked out that way that like, oh, you know, I made this video and then it turned out that I actually could make a bunch of videos. So, uh, and really any video I make is applicable for a series, you know, so, um, yeah, often if there's a, if there's a really good concept, um, it probably will more than likely become a series on my channel, you know, um, and often I find the best videos, best video series are ones that don't even start out as like a, a planned series or anything like, because I think, I think the Family Tree video is probably my best, it's, it's my only series really, isn't it? Besides the crew reviews, it's really my only series on the channel. Um, but it depends on how good the video is like, um, yeah, so a lot of, a lot of other Thomas channels, they generally have like reviews, like they'll usually do a review of Thomas or they'll do like like in Thomas movies, they'll do like a review of Thomas movies or they'll do like, you know, series reviews. That's a very common thing now. But um, when it comes to series on my channel, um, I kind of like to think outside the box, you know, because um, there's a lot of content for Thomas. There's 20 something, se 20, 24 seasons, you know, so there's a lot of content. Um, and so there's a, there's a lot of potential for series out there. And so often when I make a video, you never know, it could turn into a series, you know. It all depends on if there's a potential for a series, you know. Um, so yeah. To be as complicated as it was, but there you go. Now there were a few narrow gauge engines who didn't make the list, like Freddie Hunslet, for example. This is my lip service to Freddie Hunslet, because I knew that if I, I knew I couldn't leave out Freddie. And so I, I stuck him in there. Also, another thing I like to do with videos is sometimes I'll leave something at the end of the video. Like, for example, I'll mention Freddie Hunslet here. And if I get any comments in the video where they say, like, you know, why did you mention Freddie? Um, or like, did you, Freddie wasn't mentioned at all in this video. I know for a fact that they didn't watch it to the end because I mentioned Freddie here. So I often like to leave little things at the end of the video where people are like, you know, so I can kind of catch people out so I can see if they watch the video or not, you know. Um, so, not really to catch people out, just to see if they, how many people actually watch to the end, you know. Um, yeah, so it's just, yeah, interesting to me. People, or most of the freelance design, I've been meaning to get this video was going to that it did. Now, and, and the, 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 usually, I think the outro is usually the, it's like the, the second to last thing that I make for the video, like, um, you know, because usually I'll have all the clips together, and, uh, the outro will be like the last thing that I edit. Um, so like obviously all the audio is edited first, um, but the outro is also, it's like, I think the outro is usually the last thing that I edit. It's usually the intro and the outro I do first, or I do last. Um, so like, cause you'll notice that I use a lot of clips. Excuse me. You notice I use a lot of clips. Um, you'll notice I use a lot of clips from the, the video here again. And um, yeah, so it's like, it's like, I basically just go back through the video and I just take random clips and I just put them near the end, you know, it just kind of, kind of, kind of keeps the flow of the video going, kind of, you know, 
it just it just constant cuts and all that you know just to sort of keep it flowing you know and um, so yeah the intro and the outros are the last things i edit because i just i have all the content and i don't need to be worrying about oh god i've got to download this episode i got to download that episode because i already have a whole bunch of videos where or a whole, yeah a whole bunch of episodes that i can pull clips from and just stick them near the front or stick them near the end of the video so yeah that's usually the last bits i edit as much as I made fun of Audrey for having so many bases and so many locations be exactly the same as Talcan Railway, to the point that it's almost comedic, I actually kind of like that Audrey made them almost like clones of each other. I'll be the first to admit that the Scarlow Railway from Thomas was what got me interested in the Talcan Railway. And this is, this is true for a lot of people where like the Talcan Railway was the thing that got them interested in Thomas. So, um, I, I kind of, I wanted to be honest there, you know, be honest with myself. And, you know, kind of maybe hope other people will be honest about that too. Because it's true, you know, as much as people hate to admit that, as much as people like to hate to say that, like, the Scarlet Railway is the reason that we hear about the Talcan Railway, it's kind of true. It's true, you know. And so I wanted to just be honest there, you know, because I feel like a lot of people can be a bit dishonest sometimes. So it's important to be truly, genuinely honest when it comes to your videos, you know. Like, really, really, just be honest. Don't hold back and be just true and honest about what you think and what you say when it comes to your videos, you know? Like, who cares about what people say? Once you deliver in a way that's understanding or once you deliver in a way that is, like, not demeaning or, like, stupid, you know, once it's... Once what you're saying is, like, in a well-constructed, well-mannered way, you can say anything. You can really make any argument. Like I don't, I'm, I'm very much a person who listens to all arguments. So like, don't be afraid. If you're, if you want to make a video and you're scared about what people might think, just, just make it. Like you know, yeah. Railway. The fact that Scarlowe, Reneus, and the rest of the engines are all technically real engines that you can go and visit. All as much as I have made fun of the lore of the scaffold that Audrey made, let's be real. The team that can stay as close as is legally allowed to the Falcon Railway. And this is this is a true thing where like um, the legality of the Scarlowe and the Talclin Railway actually goes both ways. So like if the show wants to use like the Talclin rolling stock, you know, they kind of need to have to go ahead from the Talclin Railway, I'd say, you know. Um, I mean, they obviously work together, but, you know, um, yeah, that's a, that's a bit of that's just a bit of a reference to that there. So, yeah, even if it does defy logic at times. <laughs> Thank you all for. Also, I love the line about the Scar Cloney Railway. I thought about that joke while making the video, and I thought I was like, yeah, Scar Cloney. Uh, I thought that was funny. So, yeah. And I will catch you all in the next one. It's Lan Awalia. Oh, yeah. Also, this this um, this um this bit here with, like, uh, what was it? Scar Lowy. The, the shot actually comes from... Uh, the shot comes from uh, Scar Lowy the Brave, which is also the intro that I used. So... I wanted to sort of parallel the opening of the video with the end of the video. So the last shot I use is the, the shot that like it comes from Scarlet the Brave. So I thought I thought it'd be a nice little payoff for the end of the video there. So yeah. I always like to kind of try to keep things symmetrical, have things sort of start off and pay off in a way, you know. So yeah. And yeah, that was pretty much the Scarlet uh, family tree video. Um my god. Uh, so let me know what you think of these commentary tracks like if you like them if you like hearing me sort of break down the video and your thoughts on them um uh it's it's fun to kind of just you know go through the video and sort of explain things um i also i also pinned this here this is this is i gave the worst gift i actually edited this video here i if you if you watch uh, please please watch this video because it's only got a few hundred views um and it's actually it was really fun to film and edit and um it's it's quite a funny video it's of me and josh uh just sort of goofing around going to a toy shop um but and i linked it at the end of the video obviously uh but it, it, that that was something that i made while making this video and it was released like the same day um i, oh, I should also mention that brianna or my friend sleepy henry she um she actually had a premiere happening the same day and i felt kind of bad uh, because like she only had like 14 viewers on her stream and I had like 200 I think so I felt really bad um, that I, I streamed at the same time as her uh, so yeah but she she made a great video as well uh, breaking down why Edward is like the villain like obviously this was this was uploaded April Fool's Day so like this was like a, this is like a fool of a fool because a lot of people were saying that oh this is going to be a joke but it actually turned out that it was real so um, it, it just turned out really funnily so yeah 
Um, but yeah, anyway, so that's my breakdown of um, my Scarloy Railway Family Tree video. Uh, let me know if you want any more commentary tracks like this. Because, um, you know, they're actually... It might be fun to just go through videos and break them down and see what they're like. Um, and if you if you want stuff like this, I'll uh, I'll make more of it. So yeah, thanks for listening and I'll catch you all in the next one. Slán, awalia. Well, yeah.